German Chancellor Angela Merkel has announced she'll step down as leader of her Christian Democratic Union Party, leaving her political future unclear. I will not put myself forward again as candidate for the CDU chair. Vierte Amtszeit ist meine letzte als Bundeskanzlerin der Bundesrepublik Deutschland. Germany after Merkel. This is going to be one of the most detailed video where I'm going to show you what kind of different parties are running up in the elections, what are their different kind of strategies and policies on taxes, migration and refugee policies because all of these things are going to affect how the next four years are going to look like for Germany. So if you like this video, share it with your friends. I have put a lot of time and effort inside in just condensing all of the different kind of ideas from different kind of election programs of all of the four major parties. So make sure when you're done watching this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends so that they know what kind of different policies are awaiting them in these next elections. Now, Angela Merkel has been the Chancellor of Germany since 2005 and she has served four terms. This is her last term and she announced that she is not going to run in the election again. To summarize it for you, I've built a timeline and I've also added the result of the elections and I've also added the survey of the current election prognosis and what kind of parties are getting behind. In 2005, when Angela Merkel, she took the office, the government spending was actually pretty high so it was like almost around 46 percent but she brought it down to almost 43 percent that is a huge reduction when you're talking about it in billions of euros another very good thing that happened um, after she took the office was like in 2008 when the economic crisis hit she was still able to bring down the unemployment rate by more targeted spending of the government by incentivizing companies to hire more people so that the unemployment rate overall goes less which meant that the german unemployment rate reduced from almost 12 percent which was in 2005 to just around four percent in 2015 and it reduced further to 2.5 percent just before the covid crisis hit in 2009, Angela Merkel took her second term after getting elected the first time in 2005 and that further helped develop the German economy and a big credit of German economy being the largest economy in Europe since 2008 has been credited to her because of the economic expansion policies that she spearheaded during her time in the parliament. Then she took the third term in 2013 and there you had many countries which were supportive of the refugee policy and many others, for example, Poland, Czech Republic, Slovakia, Hungary and Romania which were not really supportive of that. And then afterwards, in 2017, she was able to form the government again, but not with a lot of votes. So that was around the time when things started changing. In 2016, there was an event which happened in Cologne where a lot of uh, people who were described as people from North African or, or Arabic descent, who essentially molested a lot of women on the New Year's Eve in Cologne, and that really changed the direction for Merkel and her approving ratings in Germany. Back in 2015, when the entire refugee crisis hit, you can see that in Germany, the pro-immigrant sentiment among Germans was actually still decent. It was at around 33% and it reduced heavily after that to almost half, which is like 18%, which describes that very fine line of that Cologne event, which happened back in 2000. 15, 16. And also, as you can see in the graph, Angela Merkel's approval ratings actually decreased after that thing happened. So that was really a changing moment for her and things really started turning uh, in a different direction. And this time, instead of running for a fifth time, she took the decision that I'm not going to run for the elections anymore. And that pretty much brought into light a lot of different kind of parties which have been gaining momentum for over the years. And one of the parties which many people discuss about is IFD or the Alternative für Deutschland party, which is supposed to be a right-wing anti-immigration party. There are a lot of concerns for that too, but I'm going to show you next what kind of ratings they're still having right now for the German parliament elections. There was a survey on 11th September 2021 and the German elections are on 26th September 2021. So it's just a 15 day difference. But here you can see that actually Merkel's party, CDU CSU, is just at 20% votes. SPD is at 26% votes, which is more of a left-leaning party. Then you can see AFD is just at 11%. You have FDP, it is one of my favorite parties, it is at 13%. Then you have Die Linke, or the leftists, 
like the left essentially they are at six percent and then you have the greens which are at 15 percent and all of the other people are um, in nine percent smaller parties or independent candidates now who is the chancellor candidate for what party here i can show you real quick so we have Amin Lashet, who is the chancellor candidate for CDU CSU, which has been Angela Merkel's party. Then afterwards, we have Olaf Scholz, which is the vice chancellor of Germany right now, was also previously serving as the finance minister of Germany. And his party has a rating of 26%, which is by far the largest number of votes any of these parties are getting. So SPD is like still running in the elections at the number one position. Then afterwards, you have AFD, which is at just 11%. Then you have FDP which is Freie Demokratische Partei, and that's like from Christian Lindner. In AFD, there are essentially two people which are running for um, chancellorship, and that's Tino Trupala and Alice Weidel. And then afterwards, from the Greens, you have Annalena Baerbock. She has been running as the chancellor candidate, and she was actually in a lot of controversy previously with her PhD and the book that she wrote. A lot of plagiarism was found there, and the Greens are actually also very infamous for the kind of policies that they are proposing. And I'm going to list all of them down for you. So I'm going to divide all of these uh, parties into three categories, which is the refugee politics, the migration and taxes. They say that they want to reduce the number of incoming refugees and they also want to deport the refugees who commit a crime. Because as soon as they commit the crime, I think the benefit of being a guest or something, that's what was written in the election program, that goes away and then essentially you have to be deported. And I personally think it's better because with the crimes that you see in Europe now, sometimes like some stabbings happen or something like that, most of the times these are all people from from the Middle East who came in as refugees. So I find it rather better that they are having a policy like that. Then afterwards with SPD, they are, like SPD is a party which I do not like at all. So um, not because like they want to allow more refugees or something, but from the next point that they are speaking. So they write that gut integrierten Menschen ohne gesicherten Aufenthalt will die SPD ein dauerhaftes Bleiberecht ermöglichen. So, if you're like well integrated, I don't know like what their definition of well integrated is because that can be in a very gray zone and you don't know who is well integrated and who isn't. Somebody living in Germany since the last 10 years could be somebody who is not integrated. Like just speaking German like does not really mean that you're integrated. So this is a very weird kind of like um, term that they're using. But they say that even if you do not have a secure income, so like you're unemployed or something, we are still going to keep you in Germany, which is very weird because at the same time when they're trying to put more burden on the state funds, they're also not incentivizing the people who are actually making a lot of money for them to stay in Germany because SPD is one of the parties which want to charge a lot of money from the rich people and they're bringing it in all sorts of form. Also for SPD, the definition of rich is actually not like the ultra rich or ultra wealthy that you're thinking about. That is actually like um, very like I think very good middle class people or something. And of course, all of the tax policies I'm going to talk about very soon. The main idea is that SPD is essentially the left party and they want to increase the taxes, which is something that I personally do not like. That is one of the major reasons I do not like this party because that is going to drive innovation away from Germany. And as soon as you raise the taxes, the companies essentially get incentivized to look for some other kind of opportunities to move out of the country. And you see this being done in Germany by people who are solopreneurs, for example, people who are running YouTube channels or who are just digital entrepreneurs who can move anywhere they want. And many of the Germans, what they do is they then move to Cyprus. And Cyprus is a pretty nice country. You have just 12.5% corporate tax rate and 0% tax on dividends, which is of course interesting. Then afterwards, we have our next party, which is IFD. They want to reduce refugees, they want to leave um, EU, so there's going to be a Dexit. So Germany wants to leave uh, EU essentially according to their idea, but of course that is not the norm for most of the people because you can see it from their numbers, it's just 11% right now. So they also want to step out of the UN Migration and Asylum Pact, so they are not forced to take any refugees whatsoever and they also want to ban hijab in any kind of public sector um, jobs and things like that. Christian Linder, which is the chancellor candidate of FDP, he has different kind of ideas. So he wants to regulate the asylum seekers so that people who really need help are actually able to come inside. But the people who are just like 
uh, economic migrants, they do not want to bring them in. And then also the overall intake of refugees should be limited. Now for the Party Di Linka, I haven't put any kind of characteristics down in this kind of comparison because it is pretty much everything that SPD is saying, but it is just like really maxed out. It's like completely on the extreme left level. So which I personally do not see the sense of like going through. Then we have the Greens. Um, the Chancellor candidate is Annalena Baerbock and she essentially wants to say that there should be better distribution of refugees within EU and she's also against deportation. So pretty much here the policies which I find like rather interesting is like definitely of CDU, CSU and of FDP because you definitely want to make sure that people who really need help are able to come inside. Of course, that is important, but you also want to make sure that it is not going to cost your own country, the people who are living there, their safety and security. So that's very important. Then afterwards, we talk about migration. So this is migration in the terms of students, professionals, and other people who want to come and work in Germany. So what CDU CSU says is that there should be targeted migration. So instead of taking everybody in, we would just take the people that we require. And I find it very interesting because they also say that foreign degrees should be easily recognized. Now CDU CSU has been Merkel's party and they of course have done a lot of things. The previous bill that was passed was the Fakref der Einwanderungsgesetz. So essentially anybody who is specialized should be allowed to come in Germany and settle down easier which is of course nice and I pretty much believe that if they come into power it is going to get even easier. Then afterwards we have SPD which pretty much does not want to target immigration they just want to let everybody in and they say that there should be an easy citizenship process for foreigners of course which is nice. Then afterwards we have easier migration for qualified individuals. This is something which is being said by IFD. So if somebody is qualified or something, they should be uh, brought inside and the citizenship should not be given to everybody. Citizenship should only be on the basis of origin. So if you're born in Germany or if you had any kind of relation to Germany, then you should be given the citizenship. Otherwise, you shouldn't. Then afterwards, we have FTP, which pretty much talks about the immigration in terms of a Canada model. So you have specific jobs which are needed in the country. And for that, you give out point system so that you're able to evaluate the applications which are being submitted for visa in a much better way. I find this a very interesting idea. I think this can definitely solve a lot of problems that Germany is facing right now, especially with the lack of workers. I think that can definitely be improved. They also say that they want more qualified foreigners. And also one very nice thing that was mentioned here was they want to have citizenship after four years instead of eight years. Because right now in Germany, you can only apply for citizenship after eight years of staying in Germany. And from those eight years, you have to have five years in which you are living in Germany and you're paying taxes. And there are different kind of clauses in which it can get reduced even further. And that is like also when you have better German proficiency and so on. But definitely under FTP, this is going to get um, even better. Then afterwards, we have uh, the Greens, which pretty much talk about that, okay, um, everybody should be able to migrate to Germany. There should be an easy citizenship process. That's also something that they claim. And they say that the foreigners should be eligible for citizenship just after five years and not after eight years. So many of these parties are trying to make the citizenship process easier for the people who want to come to Germany. So the one concern that many people have that is, like after elections, after Merkel goes away, that it is going to be the end of immigration. It is not going to be because if you take a look at the numbers, you have 15% plus 13%, so 28%, plus 26%, 54%, plus 20%, so 74% of the parties which are for immigration, which want to bring more people inside and more qualified individuals inside, which is the main thing that you should be focusing at because this is not really a question of politics. It is more of a question of economics. So if you do not have any kind of workers in the country, how are you going to generate productivity? If you do not generate any productivity, how are you going to make money? And if you don't make any money, how are you going to pay the taxes so that you can pay the older generation the pension that they very well deserve? Then afterwards, let's talk about one of the most important thing, taxes, which I personally also find very important. And that was also the reason why I decided to register my business in Romania and no longer in Germany because the taxes were just getting very ridiculous. Now again, you have to keep in mind is when I talk about taxes getting ridiculous, I talk about it at the level of 
500,000 euros, 1 million euros. I'm not talking about 50, 60,000 euros because that is something that most of the engineers or qualified professionals earn when they come to Germany. And with that money, you can actually afford a lot of nice things. Germany gives you a very good value for money. You actually get a lot of nice facilities. You get really nice hospitals. You have free education in the universities and in the schools. If you're having children, you're given out almost 200 euros per month so that you have some kind of additional support so that you can raise your children better. So all of these benefits you wouldn't get without taxes. But I also believe that there has to be a fair tax system so that the people who earn a lot, who bring a lot of productivity into the country, they should also be incentivized to stay in the country and employ more people and not the other way around. So that's where I thought like CDU, CSU, they really did not do a good job. And that's where the idea of FTP is much, much better because they want to reduce the taxes for everyone. And it's not just like, you know, the rich people that they claim to be are like ultra wealthy or something. So CDU, CSU, they want to introduce a thing called Finance Transaction Steuer, which is a finance transaction tax. This means just like you buy the phone, laptop, camera, you pay a VAT on those purchases they say that when you are buying stocks or you're buying etfs or something you should also pay a vat on that so even if you're just buying stocks for 1000 euros you have to pay one person on top of it which turns out to be 10 euros now again this is going to be a really big burden on anybody who is trying to invest in the stock market and this is the main reason i'm really not a fan of it but cdu csu they are not against a finance transaction steuer and they actually want to figure out a way to implement it nicely which I, I do not see happening like once you start talking about introducing a tax what happens is they just make a trial run and then it never goes away so that's something very interesting cdu csu is also against raising taxes which is interesting and they want to reduce the taxes for companies which i find very beneficial because they wrote it very clearly in their election program that if you want to stay competitive on the international level and at the same time you also want to have the highest taxes for the companies both cannot go hand in hand so there has to be some improvements there and this is very different what joe biden in us has been planning his party has been planning which is raising taxes for everyone so that's like pretty much the general norm if i see right now in scandinavia recently norway won the elections and for the first time since 1959 Finland, Iceland, Denmark, Norway, Sweden, all of these countries have left-leaning parties. And left-leaning parties are just getting more and more momentum in the Western European countries and the West in general. I personally feel that a lot of this also has to do with the COVID crisis where some people lost jobs, not some, actually a lot of people lost jobs. And when they see somebody else actually earning money or something, for them, the sentiment becomes rather negative that like, if I'm not able to get this money, how is this person living a good life and that's how the left wing actually comes into power because they are the only ones who want to just raise taxes on everyone but what many people do not understand is just because some rich person is taxed more does not mean that you end up getting the money at all most of the times this money just disappears in some more kind of like government spending some government programs and things like that if you would see many of the consulates so for example i was the part of many events in the Indian consulates and so on, you see that like many of these events are very, very expensive. Now, do you think the people who pay taxes in India and are actually giving the money to the government, that money is going to the poor people? No, that money somehow gets spent into these kind of programs, into traveling around, into like hosting like massive events and things like that. That never really ends up trickling down to the poor. So I really believe that this notion that just by taxing the rich people, you can actually get more money for the poor or something, that's absolutely false. That has never worked previously and that is never going to work because in the government, you have all sorts of people who have their own best interests in mind, no matter what kind of country it is. Now we talk about the taxes of SPD and boy, I hate it. Like I was reading it and it was just, it just gave such a bad taste in my mouth because when I was reading these things, it was just one horrible thing after the next. Of course, they are the ones who have been pushing for the idea of finance transaction steuer. And this is being done by Olaf Scholz ever since he was the finance minister of Germany. When he became the vice chancellor, again, he was pushing for it. And now when he's a chancellor candidate and most probably he's going to be the next chancellor of Germany, he wants to introduce the finance transaction steuer, which is again, like I said, if you buy 1000 euros worth of stocks, you are anyways always taxed on the profits. So there's no like worry about that, but you're also taxed on the buying of those stocks, which is 
so stupid and this is again all of the money that you have already paid taxes on because you paid your income tax or your loan store your salary tax and so on you've already paid that so you pay taxes again like when you are uh, buying stocks and stuff which is crazy they want to raise taxes for high earners that is people who are earning above 250,000 euros and for everybody else who is earning below 250,000 euros per year they want to reduce tax this is something which i personally find positive because they are going to at least reduce the taxes for the majority of the population they want to have more tax on the companies and like cdu and chu said like you cannot have companies which are really competitive and really innovative at the world level while at the same time having the highest taxes in the world this does not go together then afterwards they want to reduce the taxes like i said for lower and middle class they want to introduce a wealth tax which is very interesting to me because wealth tax was there in germany previously a lot of countries have tried it but like what happens is as soon as you have a wealth tax introduced the richer people of the country they start moving away which makes the countries to actually then reduct the wealth tax like it was previously you can read more about it on internet but there are so many countries which tried that before it just did not work out but this somehow still feeds the fetish of spd to tax the rich that the rich should feed everybody else and i find that very interesting like instead of supporting entrepreneurship and starting your own businesses starting things on the side they want to go into a completely different path which i personally am not a huge fan of and there's another reason why i personally find the chancellor candidate of spd like rather incompetent at giving any kind of finance advices especially when he was the finance minister previously and was also the mayor of hamburg so um, you can see this here when the lady the interviewer actually asks olaf scholz for a tip or essentially um, his own opinion like how does he invest his money so you can listen to this here ich mache das was einem kein anlageberater empfiehlt ich lege mein geld nur auf einem sparbuch also an, sogar auf dem girokonto an und da kriegt es die and you can see the dislikes on this video i've also disliked this video because this is very very horrible advice this guy pretty much says who was the finance minister of germany that instead of investing the money in etfs and stocks and so on i just leave my money on my giro konto or my current account which actually has negative interest rate that means if the money is lying there the banks are charging you money for like keeping your money there this is not a good advice at all and especially if you want to promote individualism if you want to promote people to take care of their own self when they grow old this is a very very horrible advice so this is the reason why olaf scholz is not popular at all at least in the investing community in germany in the entrepreneurship community in germany this guy is uh, something that is the worst nightmare for most of the people and um Yeah, like I said, the advice as finance minister is keep your money in the current account or in the Sparbuch, which is so stupid. Sparbuch, you get like 0.01% um, interest rate or something and inflation itself is 2%. So how does it even make sense? So definitely something that I'm not looking forward to. But as you can see, he would be most probably the next chancellor. Great for migration. um great for like you know getting more people inside and so on but very very bad for companies and very bad for people who want to like uh invest in the stock market and things like that of course people are still going to do it because if they were just previously paying 26.375% tax now there is going to be 1% tax on top or something but again like definitely not a step in a good direction IFD essentially so we have talked about all of the things for them previously but what they want to do is also put a finance transaction steuer they want to reduce the taxes for everyone they're actually in the favor of cutting so many different kind of taxes which is interesting uh, they want to reduce the tax for the companies that is also very nice and then they talk about leaving or dumping the euro currency and they want to go back to the previous currency which was the deutsche mark so that is also interesting but what they do not understand is the kind of benefits that people have just because they're having the currency in euro you can just go to any of the other countries you don't have to worry about exchanging the currency and things like that there is so much hassle which has been saved for the companies and for the people who travel between the borders so i do not think like this is a good idea at all so for me like ifd is pretty much a no go i don't think like their policies are good enough to appeal to the larger public yes they speak to the anti um, immigrant sentiment for some of the eastern german states because in east germany you can essentially see that like many of the states have still this 
anti-immigrant sentiment. Western Germans are more welcoming and are more open to immigration, whereas in East Germany, the things are a bit opposite. So now I come to my favorite party. I think I pretty much am a huge fan and I would vote for this party, FDP, uh, because of the kind of tax policies and the heavy focus on entrepreneurship and innovation that this party has. That even the person, the chancellor candidate, he talks about having different kind of apps so that you can see how much money you're able to get in your older age and so on. A heavy focus on digitalization and a heavy focus on incentivizing people and the companies to take care of their own self when they grow older. So for example, they are the ones who do not believe in finance transaction steuer because when you buy some stocks or some ETFs, you are not getting some kind of physical product or anything tangible which is not going to lose in value. With stocks and ETFs, it is also possible that it can go completely to zero. So like what have you paid the tax for them? So that's very interesting. They really believe in reducing taxes for everyone, which is something that I find very positive. They also want to reduce taxes for the companies and they want to promote investing, which is also very nice. Again, you have to keep in mind that this is the same company which wants to reduce the citizenship from eight years to four years. And they also want to bring more qualified professional inside. But again, they are not really getting so much um, support right now. It's just like 13%, which is almost at the same level of IFT and lesser than the Greens, which is something very interesting. The thing with Greens is that, of course, they kind of um, speak to the environmental um, factor to most of the people. But you see, like most of these parties, they are talking about environment so much, but they do not see the consequences of like putting even further taxes on top of these things. These are the same people who fly around in private jets, who still use paper to write, save the trees. Uh, so that they can somehow protest but this paper is essentially made from the trees so this kind of hypocrisy and double standards is something like i personally find uh, very uh, disturbing in the greens like of course the basic idea is good you should save the environment you should work towards the environment but having so many protests that you're actually like you know hampering the economy you're hampering the people who have to earn their living, you're causing so much disruption, but not in a nice way, and you're not offering any solutions. This is something which I personally do not like at all. So um, with the FTP, at least, I think this is something very nice. And also one of the very interesting things that they are talking about is if you're holding the stocks for a longer duration, you will not pay any kind of tax on profits because you have kept the stocks for a longer duration. And that was previously over a year and in some countries it's over three years so it depends so this is one part which i absolutely love so here i can show you from 535 there was also a very big german youtuber axiom mit Kopf, who also like supported this for example he also talks about that there has to be more incentives so that people are able to buy their own apartments and that more apartments are being built in germany and especially in germany when many times you have this uh meat bremse or like this uh meat decal which is pretty much that you're only allowed to charge this much money if somebody is living in your apartment that means the state decides how much you're able to charge somebody when you are actually renting them your own apartment i find that very disturbing because this is not going to be something which supports um people to buy more apartments build more apartments and so on whereas the fdp talks about something in a complete opposite direction need frei leben zu können Eine weitere Idee ist neben Again, this is the important part. Waren in Wertpapieren zu unterstützen. Unsere Idee ist, dass wenn du eine Aktie oder ein anderes Wertpapier kaufst und die nicht sofort handelst, nicht sofort tradest, sondern über einige Jahre hältst, dass der Gewinn der Kurssteigerungen da nicht besteuert wird, sondern dass der bei dir bleibt. Das wäre ein Anreiz, um sehr langfristig in Wertpapiere zu investieren, uh, um da rein zu sparen und das Geld nicht auf dem Sparbuch zu lassen. This is very positive because what Christian Linder here says is that if somebody is holding the stocks for a longer duration, it should be an incentive for that person to keep the profits because he is not doing speculation, but he is investing to take care of his older self, which is again very positive. Now afterwards, we come to the last one, which is the Greens. Again, uh, absolutely horrible tax plan that they have been putting out. Um, the first thing that they were talking about is they are going to have another level at which the people who are earning above 100,000 euros are going to directly tax at 45%. Right now, it is at 274,000 euros. So once you start earning 274,000 euros per year, after that, you are paying 45% tax. Not on the entire amount, but after that. So the 275,000 euro that you earn, 
that will be taxed at 45%. That is something that many people get wrong when people hear 45%. They think that the entire amount is going to be taxed at 45% when that is not the case at all. So here, for example, you can see they also are up for finance transaction. They want to put citizenship based on nationality, just like U.S. has. So if you're a U.S. national, no matter what kind of country you go to, you still have to pay the taxes to the U.S. state, which makes for them owning a lot of like financial products and stuff very difficult. Many companies do not want to touch that. And also they are not allowed to work with a lot of brokers and stuff if you're investing in stocks and so on which sucks and germany wants to try the same if they are under the rule of the greens which is most probably not going to be the case so it is going to be interesting like what kind of coalition that makes because that is going to be very interesting which is also going to decide the further policies um, but they also want to have more taxes on the companies they are also talking about a co2 tax which is very interesting they want to reduce the taxes for the lower and middle class they want to introduce a wealth tax which is going to be one percent per year above 2 million euros. So that is going to be almost like 20,000 euros per year that you'll be paying in taxes. Then uh, they want to raise the taxes for high earners to 45%. I already talked about this. And they're also going to like tax up further uh, the people who are earning above 250,000 euros or something. Right now, that 45% bracket is at 274,000 euros. And their motto is essentially also like nobody should be rich because they just want to like tax anybody who is having more money and want to give it to the poor people. But like I said, the money never reaches the poor people, no matter what kind of country it is. Of course, Germany right now is more efficient because they're able to invest it in hospitals, in infrastructure, in education via schools and universities. So this is essentially the entire list that I made about um, different kind of parties with their policies on taxes, migration and refugee politics. I hope you really like this video because it took a lot of time for me to put all of these points, read all of the German documents and then translate these things for you so that you can understand this better. It is very important that when you come to Germany, you do not just feel as an outsider who is not having any kind of say or any kind of control or any kind of opinion about these kind of things. I think you should also engage with the politics because all of the policies which are made in the parliament are going to be in the end affecting you. So it is very important that you also keep all of these things in mind. So in the end, if I talk about the general kind of mood that I see for Germany right now is first, they want to keep migration. They are going towards more of a USA or Canada type model so that they're able to bring more people inside. And it is not going to head into a different direction that many people are scared of with IFP because they do not have a lot of votes. Most of the German parties are pro-migration because they know that Germany still needs more workers. There is a general sentiment of increasing taxes for the rich and reducing taxes for the people who are earning not so much. And from not so much, I mean anything below 250,000 euros per year. But if you're already earning 500,000 euros, 1 million euros per year or something, I think this is going to be rather painful for you. So like in those kind of scenarios, you might be looking at some kind of exit strategies. And of course, if you do enough research, you can find some very interesting exit strategies too from Germany. A lot of German YouTubers do it all the time. So there's nothing that you have to be worried about either. But for most of the people, all of these tax reforms are only going to be more positive and something that you can look forward to. So this was pretty much it from my side. I hope you really like this video. Uh, if you like this video, give a like, leave a comment and share it with your friend. That really helps the video and it indicates YouTube algorithm that this video was good and YouTube is also going to then show this video to more people. Thank you so much for watching this video again and I will see you in the next video. Bye.